Hello, welcome everybody uh, to this uh, webinar titled uh, Digital Data Sets, uh, Embracing the End of Paper in AIM. Um, I'm waiting right now for my colleague, Oscar Centeno. I believe that uh, some of you uh, know him. He's having some technical problems. But let's see um, what's going on with him. And if not, then uh, you, will, you will have to continue with me. So we really appreciate that, that um, you're all uh, connected to this event, to this webinar today. Um, I'm happy to see a lot of people who has uh, uh, subscribed, who has registered to this uh, webinar. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, the digital data sets, uh, but from a different point of view, uh, because uh, we will not go uh, that much into technical details. We will go into some uh, concepts definition, um, but um, we will uh, do it from, uh, for a more let's say, practical and philosophical way. So we really hope that uh, that you like these different perspective. And uh, I saw Oscar somewhere, maybe. OK, thank you, Oscar. You know that I like uh, uh, to uh, offer a little bit of mystery in these things. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm happy very to see nice, you. Very nice and very happy to see you again, Henry. Uh, sorry for this is a uh, very uh, slight uh, problem, technical problem, just to start with my camera, running it now. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, well, Henry mentioned, I could hear him. He was introducing me, uh, my name. Uh, many of you, some of you already uh, participating in this webinar, were in previous webinar that we celebrated somehow in end of April, May, it was, more or less, Henry? Yeah. Yes, so yes. So the second... This is the second webinar and we are happy to do it. So some some of you probably uh, already saw us uh, by then. So we are happy to be here again. Uh, this time we come with a very nice and interesting subject with this, uh, which is digital data sets, embracing the end of uh, paper in the context uh, of uh, AIM. So I, I really think that uh, it will be of your interest, Henry, who is there, uh, we'll be presenting uh, very, very interesting topics that uh, I'm sure you will appreciate. Uh, when we did the first webinar uh, in the springtime, we were really hoping that by the end of this year, uh, the situation of uh, COVID uh, coronavirus was uh, going to be better. But actually, mm, we cannot say that. But anyway, we see some hope and uh, uh, in the near future, it seems that situation will be a start uh, to be controlled. So uh, probably by summer season, maybe if we are uh, doing well, we will have a quite normalized situation. And maybe we, we, we can start uh, seeing each other in person again. At the same time, uh, the same thing we did last time, we want to thank you all for being there, for being working so hard in these circumstances and in these situations, which is not easy for anyone. And we appreciate a lot uh, being there today, but being there every day, working all together. We wanted to start with the first question, just to see uh, how the context it is. Where are you coming from? Which is your uh, previous knowledge about this topic and other topics? So uh, we would like you to, to answer this as short, very short question, like, uh, is this the first time you participate in, uh, in one of these uh, Group ED events? I know that some of you, it is not, because uh, we, we saw and I saw the list of participants. And I know many names and I'm happy to see them, and I'm happy that they participate and they, they are together sharing this time with us. A little so, bit of time for you to answer, yeah? Yes, yes, I mean, uh, um, I see uh, uh, a lot of people have already voted and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, this interaction. Uh, I will just give it uh, uh, um, some more seconds just to see if we can get more information, please. Everybody who just connected, uh, uh, make sure that, uh, that you see in the screen now um, a question, our first uh, poll of the day, uh, which is, we just want to know if, if this is the first time that you participate in, in, in these events. So I think that uh, we are reaching a good level, Oscar. I will just uh, stop it and then uh, we can see the results. Yeah, you uh, actually, uh, yes, we see there 
uh, that it is the first time for 50, 55% of the people and 45% of the people have already, it's almost 50-50, half of the people attending have already attended one of these QPD events and some of them are new. So welcome everybody, those already knowing us and those uh, coming here for the first time. Happy to host you here. I'm sure you will enjoy. <laughs> So in this webinar, Group PAD experts uh, will explain, when we say Group PAD experts, it's mainly in this case, Henry, <laughs> very expert in the subject. I will support him anyway. And uh, we will be explaining, Henry will be explaining uh, what is data and uh, which are the ICAO digital data sets, why digital data sets are the future of the aeronautical information products, how an organization should be prepared for the challenges of implementing digital data sets. And we have as uh, for the last time, some recommendations uh, for the webinar for you being there. Uh, the conference is being recorded. I mean, uh, what uh, you will be seeing in the screen, it's, uh, it's going to be recorded and it will be available. The web webcam is not available. Um, it, this means that we cannot see you. We know that you are there, but we don't see you. You can't see us. Uh, your microphones are by default uh, muted. So initially you are not able to, to, to speak unless uh, we habilitate you habilitate the microphones in order to, to speak if you have any questions. But for the questions, uh, we would rather uh, prefer uh, to have them all at the end. Of, the, of, of this time. So we will have uh, the possibility also to use a questions and answer interface where you can type your questions on the way and uh, we can have a look. Maybe I will have a look and try to answer. But if it is possible, just we will uh, keep them for uh, the end of the webinar. Uh, also in the meantime, as you have already seen for the first poll we had, uh, we will be presenting some polls and we will be commenting the results uh, based on your answers. And also there will be a survey at the end of the of the webinar when we will be finished. Uh, you will receive a, a, a survey that we will be very happy if you dedicate a little bit of your time. It's very short uh, to, to just answer a few questions. And uh, to continue with this, uh, although you see already Henry there in the screen, uh, I really want to introduce him for those who have not seen him already uh, in the last uh, time. So Henry Cáceres is a senior AM project expert. He has been working in uh, EAD for many years. He has a background as an engineer in airports. He has been working in this context. Uh, in uh, the AIS and AIM world, he has been waiting for almost 20 years. And he joined uh, Group EAD many years ago. Well, no, not really. We are not so well old. So a few years ago. <laughs> uh, he has been involved in the EAD operations, in the AIM operations, but as well, he is very uh, involved in the training activities in Group EAD. And apart from operations being different uh, roles, operations, uh, supervisor of operations, uh, he has been doing many things. He's also working in uh, some consultancy projects that we also uh, do and we also we regularly perform in Group PAD. And he's uh, participated in different forums. So he's very active in the AA world. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you very much for this introduction. Um, I, I'm really happy to, to be here today uh, working with you. I'm really happy that uh, we have uh, that many participants uh, so far, uh, we have almost 100, so it's it's great to see that there is a, a very nice um, uh, initiative and interest from the community in participating in this. So since you already introduced me, then I'm going to pay the favor and when I, I will introduce you. So our host today is Mr. Oscar Centeno. He's our training deputy officer in, in, in Group AD. Um, he's also a, a lawyer and, and also with uh, Air airport experience and uh, even working in one of the most uh, beautiful places uh, in the world in Spain called Ibiza in, in airport Ibiza. So although he looks young, don't be, um, uh, don't, don't make him fool of it because uh, it's uh, 20 years of experience. So uh, <laughs> it, it, he has a lot of experience and also 
uh, mainly as a training uh, in the training department. He's, uh, as you see, it's our training deputy officer. Uh, he has developed a lot of uh, training all over the world and related to AIM and uh, even uh, providing these training courses uh, in several languages like uh, Spanish, Portuguese, French. I don't know if I'm missing another one, Oscar. Well, uh, those who know him, Honduran. <laughs> <laughs> those who know him, uh, uh, he speaks many languages, yeah, even uh, some forgotten. <laughs> Um, he's uh, very experienced uh, in EAD operations. He's actually working uh, uh, in the EAD since 2003, so you can imagine the experience that he has. Um, he's also participated um, uh, in, a, in an ICAO project, an important ICAO project in Kenya, in Nairobi, um, uh, where he was uh, um, in charge of uh, um, uh, being the training manager for some uh, specific uh, projects there. And he's also active uh, in many uh, forum members, uh, forums, uh, or discussions uh, in Eurocontrol, ICAO, and, and IATA. So now your turn, Oscar. So thank you very much, uh, Henry. It has been <laughs> very easy. I started very young. I was a baby when I started. This is why I have accomplished 20 years already. <laughs> uh, last time that we did a webinar, we had a, a very special gift uh, at the end of the, uh, of the presentation. We wanted to, to do the same, just to offer you a kind of a special gift that we will present by the end of our webinar. Uh, Henry will really explain a little bit when we reach the end today. So now what uh, you can just be ready. Uh, you can grab your coffee or your tea. I'm missing here my Kenyan or tea or coffee. I didn't have the chance to have one today, but hopefully my friends in Kenya also are having it, tea or coffee and well some other good coffee and tea from uh, other places as well of course so we can go thank you oscar see you later oh, i will well. be there <laughs> thank you thanks thanks for i know i know you'll be there supporting um okay so um thanks again for participating in this event um and let's start yeah um let's suppose for a moment that we are invited that you are invited to a fancy restaurant and uh, when you go to this restaurant with uh, your companion or with uh, uh, the person you are with, um, you, first of all, you see the place is fantastic and then you smell the food and everything's nice and you see the people talking, although in this picture it's a little bit empty, but uh, first thing you, you do is that you receive your menu, right? Uh, that is what we, that we get, uh, you receive your menu. And, uh, um, some sometimes it happens that the menu that you receive there maybe uh, it's something that uh, it's it's looks uh, like it's been prepared there but uh, some perhaps the dishes that they, that they are offering are not that good yeah um, just for example in the what what we see in the picture is this uh, Hawaiian pizza uh, I don't know um, the Hawaiian pizza is that that one made with uh, pineapple I love it. But I know that many people don't like it, yeah, and uh, I understand because it depends on the taste. Um, and, and what do we do? I mean, imagine the situation, you are in that restaurant and then you have a menu, but you don't like what's in there. You're limited, right? Well, if you are hungry uh, and you don't have enough time, then probably um, you will stay there and you will eat whatever they offer you, yeah, although you might not like it. If you have time, then you can go to another restaurant. That's all. That's always uh, an option. Uh, if you go to another restaurant, uh, then you are in the risk that uh, you will you will receive probably the same dishes, uh, even made with the same ingredients, but with a different price. Yeah, only because uh, it has a fancy name or it's been presented in a different way. Uh, but we're talking about the same thing, about the same uh, the same food. Uh, the question is, uh, what if what uh, they are offering you uh, is not what you want. You're still hungry, and and then, uh, but none of these restaurants uh, are are okay with you. So then, you have no other option than uh, going to your own kitchen and prepare your own food using your own resources and doing this your own way. Yeah, you will still need the ingredients. Know that that you will still uh, uh, you will still need the ingredients, and then you will need to go to the supermarket and buy perhaps even the same ingredients that you have uh, uh, that, that you can find in, in those restaurants. But this time you are going to cook this food and you're going to do it your own way, the way you like it, yeah? 
and um, and and this um, lead uh, this uh, brings me to to a question. Yeah, um, if we see AIS as a restaurant, what has been the menu that we have been offering in AIS? What is the menu that we're offering to our users? Yeah, in AIMs in AIM AIS AIM for decades. Uh, we have been providing actually the same dishes in our menu. Uh, like for instance, we have uh, in paper, the AAP, the amendment, the supplements, and we also have uh, more recently some uh, um, other formats like uh, in media, um, the electronic AAP, both in, in CD or online, when we make it available in our web. And um, that's our, our menu for years. That has been our menu for years. And I, and although for some people, the online version of the electronic AAP might seem like a great advancement because I know that there has been a lot of effort implementing the electronic AAP. Um, if we think about it, it's actually the same dish, uh, but with the same ingredients, but only presented in a different way. So the question is, are we in AIS offering a menu according to our user expectation? I mean, what else could we offer? Yeah, if they really want to, to have something else or is or these what we have in our menu is enough. How should we make sure that our customers or users are receiving uh, what they really need? We know that they still need to eat because uh, I mean, it. And, and what I mean by eating is consume our data and information. But perhaps for some users, um, our prepared dishes, our AAP and our uh, in, both in paper and in electronic are simply not enough. Maybe they need something else because they have a different taste. They want to they want to have more. Right. So we have some options and some options could be all right. Let's extend our menu. Let's have um, a, another dish here, which actually satisfy uh, their hunger. Right. Um, meaning that um, that. For instance, we can start providing the data, yeah? And if we start providing the data, um, besides these prepared uh, dishes that we have, um, then um, we could also go move or move um, instead of uh, providing prepared dishes, also to provide the ingredients for so the people can or the users can prepare their own ingredients. So, so far, we can also, uh, think about what is the main ingredient that we have in AIM. And if we think about what is the main ingredient, I know that the main ingredient, some of you will tell me that the main ingredient that we have in AIS is love, dedication, and hard work, and I agree with that. But the main ingredient that we use in AIM and that, that we should use is, is actually data. Then the question here is, um, do we have clear what is the meaning or the, what are the concepts and the definitions of data and information? And how can I provide also data to my users in order to extend the menu, in order to, to, to be able to provide more to these um, uh, people who, who really would like to have more? So we're going to elaborate a little bit more uh, during this webinar, and uh, I would like you to bear with us. But uh, uh, in the meantime, we have the second question of the day. Oscar? I am here. Yes, we can just go. So the question, uh, you should be able to, to see it in the screen. Do you know what is really the difference between data and information? So you have uh, three options to uh, answer. I'm not sure to understand the concepts. I have an idea and it is clear to me. So aeronautical data and aeronautical information, they are not exactly the same concept. And this is what we are asking about. So let's give more seconds uh, because the people is voting, but I would like to reach a, um, uh, a good percentage. So thanks everybody who are voting uh, in, the, in the poll right now. All right, then I think Oscar, we're good to go. I will share the the results. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, the majority of them, uh, they have it clear. They know the difference, uh, but very close by, they have an idea. So 45% of the people, uh, they have a clear idea about this difference between data and information. 40%, uh, they have an idea and uh, 
a small group, let's say small, 15%, uh, they are not sure uh, to, to understand the concepts. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, um, this is actually one of our objectives in this webinar, to clarify what are these concepts. So uh, let me then move to, the, to our first section. We're, we're going to talk about uh, this, yeah? Um, um, so you see there, we are in this first section about ingredients, dishes, and recipes, yeah? And uh, yeah, some of you might be wondering, what is this crazy guy talking about? But please, <laughs> bear with me uh, for some minutes. Um, because today, in today's cooking show, we're going to prepare an, uh, an exquisite uh, dish, which is called Chartalengote. Excuse my French, I know it's very bad. Maybe Oscar could have said it uh, better than me. Uh, what we need for this uh, delicious uh, dish is actually two cups of raw data, one cup of airspace data, one tablespoon uh, of, um, or two tablespoons of airport data. And then we have to boil all the ingredients with AIXM for 28 days and serve digitally in a swim plate. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know that I'm, uh, um, this is a joke, uh, but we, what we want to do is to, uh, to make an analogy of what we have uh, 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 in, the, in the cooking world uh, with uh, what we are doing uh, in AIS. But what, we're re what we really want to talk about uh, today, it's actually about data information in digital data sets. We already defined that uh, data is actually our main ingredient, and we will see that our dishes, our prepared dishes, is nothing else than the combination of these data, and also what is these digital data sets. That's uh, the whole idea in this first section. So let's start uh, with the first uh, definition, which is actually aeronautical data. Aeronautical data, it's a representation of aeronautical facts, concepts, or instructions in a formalized manner suitable for communication, interpretation, or processing. I know that this is kind of too technical. Uh, I'm, I'm highlighting here suitable for communication, interpretation, or processing. But let me uh, put this in a more practical way. So there we go. Here we have a number. You see there 3,500 or 3,500. Uh, note that this number uh, by its own is not really saying anything to us. It's meaningless because this could be 3,500 apples, 3,500 bananas, or monkeys, yeah? Um, this is actually what we know as an atomic data or data item as, uh, as mentioned in our, um, in, in, in our ICAO documentation. And as, and as we can see, actually this little piece of, uh, of information of data, it's suitable for communication, interpretation, or processing in a database, in tables in a database. And uh, this will qualify as our, as our aeronautical data. But what if this uh, data that we have here, uh, data item, data value, we start combining it, combining it with more data, like in this case, 60. Now we can read this uh, 3,500 by 60. But then still it's a combination of data, which is not giving me uh, a context. It's not giving me information yet. Uh, and we can say, well, this could be a, a, a some dimensions or this could, this could even be a multiplication. But what if I continue adding data and data and data and more data, like for instance, some units of measurement, some direction, um, some designators, some um, uh, location uh, of a threshold, and some elevation. In the end, all this combination of data, what's giving me, it's a context, it's giving me an idea, it's actually giving me information that we are talking about the properties of a runway. So from here, we can now conclude or infer that information is actually equal to the combination of data in a, in a context, in a specific context, yeah? But let's uh, continue and let's see a more formal definition of uh, what is aeronautical information. And uh, as we can find in our IKEA documentation, aeronautical information is the information resulting from the assembly analysis and formatting of aeronautical data. So if you see, it's the combination of data, in other words. So that table that we had in the previous slide, which is the combination of data, it's actually, it actually qualifies uh, under this definition, which is information. Um, good thing is that uh, whenever you have data, the data uh, combined, you can combine it in different ways. And, and that is like a mixing ingredients in different ways in order to create different dishes. Same thing happens with data and information because that table that we had in the previous slide, which qualifies as information, 
can also be presented in a different way. In what way? For example, in a chart, where the same uh, type of data, the same main ingredients that we had at the beginning, can be uh, represented here in a more graphical way using the same data, using the same ingredients, uh, but it, for a different purpose, for a different context. Because uh, in this case, it's more uh, useful, let's say, for pilots, for dispatchers, or for, for controllers. Once we, we see the definition of aeronautical data and aeronautical information, uh, we may now start uh, rethinking about uh, what is the objective of the AIS. I know that perhaps some of you might remember this uh, because the objective of the AIS is actually to ensure the flow of aeronautical data and aeronautical information. Yeah, That concept that has been uh, increased over the last years of the last two decades because at the beginning we only had to, uh, pro, uh, to assure the, um, the aeronautical information, but now we have aeronautical data and aeronautical information. And if information is, is actually the combination of data, then it makes sense actually that we need to um, uh, really be uh, data focused and think about how we can uh, um, uh, work with data, right? And with this data, we can create uh, uh, more information. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're actually doing it because in, in our um, current AIP, uh, what we have there, it's information, which is the combination of a lot of our data uh, uh, for, for, um, for a context, for a specific purpose. Uh, and what about uh, data? Yeah, we can also create data products, but let's continue talking uh, because uh, this is actually what's requested from, uh, from the AIM units uh, in, in now and also in the future. So let's see what is the definition of data set. And this is very easy because data set is uh, an identifiable uh, collection of data. So if you see uh, these uh, data set actually applies under the same definition of information because that table that we had uh, in, in, in some slides uh, um, before uh, actually applies as information, but it's also a collection of data. Yeah, uh, but usually this um, collection of data, um, we have it in, in, in a format, we have it in, a, in an AIP section. And uh, um, if you have an AIM system, it actually, it's a table in a database. It's a table in a database. And then based on this uh, uh, table that you have in a database, then you can create uh, your AIP products. Yeah, But both uh, are, follow, are falling under the definition of collection of data. Uh, because I don't really care how they are presented, but I only want to see collection of data. When we're talking about, uh, because this is the definition only of data set, but if we are talking about a digital data set, then we need to consider something else. We, we'll, we'll see it later. Um, first of all, we know that uh, in, in, in our databases, what we have, it's a collection, not only of data, but of collection of tables containing uh, data, where we have some fields and some records. But if we think about it, um, this, this applies as data set, but the digital data set is something different because digital data set, it's actually an, extra, an extraction uh, of my database uh, containing some information. Uh, we will further develop this idea, uh, but now you can see that uh, the, the definition of data set, it's only as simple as a collection of data that means that tables, either in paper or in a database, applies as data set. But what we are talking about is digital data sets, which is actually uh, could be presented in a file, for example, in an XML file or some other formats, because that that's an extraction coming from the data that we have already in our in our database. So let's go for the definition of uh, our KO digital data sets. And what is the relationship of these ICAO digital data sets and also AIXM? I know that perhaps some of you have heard about the aeronautical information exchange model. And uh, uh, I want to show here what is the relationship between ICAO digital data sets and AIXM. First of all, we see that ICAO digital data sets, according to Annex 15, is uh, one of the aeronautical information products. You might remember, or some of you might remember, might be aware that uh, information product is this new concept that we have now, uh, which is replacing the former concept e, um, IAIP, the Integrated Aeronautical Information Package. So in a way, it makes sense. Digital data sets, is, it's a collection of data, but it's also information. 
You might remember that information. It's the combination of data. So that means that digital data sets, it's a lot of data put in, uh, um, in a specific format. And according to ICAO, uh, we have what I like to call <laughs> the five, uh, the fantastic five. These are the digital data sets. I know that uh, this is driving crazy. Uh, many, many um, uh, people uh, all over the world because uh, even, even when this is um, uh, optional, uh, at the moment is optional, uh, everybody might start thinking that this could also be required in the future. Our fantastic five, our digital data sets are the AAP, the obstacles, airdrop mapping, instrument flight procedures, and terrain. Yeah. So how am I going to provide this, uh, this data? We mentioned uh, what's data, what's information, um, and we're, if we're talking about digital data sets, then that means that I need a, a, a database because all my data items will be containing tables. And in a way, uh, I also need to, to know how I need to combine all these, uh, all these data that, that I have in my table, yeah? Um, if we think about the analogy of cooking again, then what we need in order to provide the digital data sets as, as per ICAO, but as per ICAO, it's actually the recipe. I, I need the recipe. And where can I find the recipe for the digital data sets? Well, in the document 166 or PANS AIM, and, and uh, more, more specifically in the data catalog. The data catalog we have how these different items should be combined because in your data, in your database, you could have uh, more data items uh, than required for this specific recipe of creating a digital data set. Yeah? Remember that in the end, what we would like to have is to have an extraction of our database following that same recipe contained in the document 166 and, uh, and the data catalog and uh, uh, fulfilling uh, um, all the requirements contained in these two documents. But the question now here is, how should I provide this file here, this extraction of data, this combination of data according to the document 166? And then here we come with another um, uh, um, uh, definition important here, and that is the format, how I'm going to provide my digital data sets. The easier way to see this is to use AIXM 5.1 or the newer version, which is AIXM 5.1.1. So don't, uh, don't um, uh, try to complicate things. Yeah, you can provide this data in other, in other formats. Yes, of course, and even applying the same uh, recipe as found in uh, document 166. But uh, the easier way to do this, if you have already implemented the system in AIXM, it's actually um, using AIXM 5.1.1. But there is one problem here, and that is that uh, AXM 5.1 was created many years ago, and then uh, the digital data sets uh, by ICAO came. That means that uh, AXM 5.1 and the document 166 and data catalog, they are not matching one-to-one. -one. So in order to really follow the recipe by ICAO and, to, and the format to be used to provide data sets, we need something else. And that something else is called the coding guidelines for the digital data sets. Um, what is this coding guidelines? This coding guidelines is specifications on how to um, match the, the um, uh, properties and the um, features that we have in AXM 5.1 or 5.1.1 with what's required by ICAO in, in, in PANS AIM. So uh, in a way, what we are doing is adding a little bit of more spices to our AXM 5.1 and only following specific rules in order to use the same AIM system that we have. Because if, if not, then you need to have another system, yeah? And that doesn't make sense. So we have to use our own AIXM system, but we only need to consider these coding guidelines uh, um, for the different digital data sets. It happens that this is a work which has been done already. Uh, and uh, we can find very good support from AXM 5.1 for the three first uh, digital data sets for the AIP, for obstacles, and airdrop mapping. You know? uh, this is very well supported by AXM 5.1.1. What happened with the, the other two, instrument flight procedures and terrain? Well, for those, we would uh, uh, need to wait until uh, the new uh, release of AXM 5. 
uh, AXM, sorry, which is AXM 5.2. And we will for sure have also some coding guidelines specifically for fulfilling the instrument flight procedures um, uh, data set. What about for terrain? For terrain, um, it's not really uh, supported by, uh, by AIXM. Uh, there are some other models like uh, the terrain information exchange model. There is still work in progress because uh, there is still not yet uh, a decision on this. Uh, although some people think that uh, the digital terrain models and the digital elevation models very well used by, by cartographers uh, all over the world are enough for the provision of um, terrain data. Yeah? But there will be more um, um, guidelines in this respect. And there is also already um, some, gui uh, some guidelines and documentation which has been uh, created uh, at the moment. Yeah? All right, so um, let's uh, quickly see what is the uh, objective of digital data sets because we're complicating things. Uh, I was uh, uh, really okay be before with my data. But then why is that we want to have these digital data sets? Yeah? And here we see a definition to enable the management, the processing, the verification, usage, and exchange of data in a structured and automatic manner in a stream environment. So if you see uh, here, this definition tells us a lot, yeah, because it te it's telling us that uh, we're going to enable the data, we're going to, in a structured and automatic manner in a stream environment. Let's quickly review what's going on right now with uh, uh, the data chain or the information chain that we have in, in AIS. We know that uh, everything starts with the originators. Uh, they are the ones who, who are having fun uh, with uh, all the different uh, situations, the runways being closed, the, the um, uh, routes being uh, uh, also limited and also airspace is activated, et cetera. So what happens is that these originators, they send the information to the uh, AISPs, the AIS providers. And uh, there in AIS, I believe that the majority of you are taking care of receiving that information in different formats. Sometimes they call you by phone, sometimes they send you a fax, sometimes they send you an email, sometimes they fill in a form, et cetera. So we receive that information. We are the ones deciding if we should create a, a, um, a, a static or a dynamic product like a NOTAM or an AAP. And if it's AAP, then um, we, should, we should also decide if this goes to an electronic AAP online, et cetera. Um, in the best scenario, you will have an AIM system. And this system will help you to, to create these documents in a more automatic way, right? What we do in the end is that uh, we create a copy of these um, uh, products, of these dishes that we have created, and we send it exactly to the users. But what we want with digital data sets is to enhance our menu, to provide something else, to provide directly the data, yeah? So you see there that the users will also receive some data, yeah? But this data will be like pre-cooked because the digital data sets, uh, as mentioned before, uh, we have a recipe, so we have to, to, to build first this uh, information product because uh, it's a combination of data. And then uh, the thing is that, uh, what is the user going to do only with data? Well, the users can do many things because it will require from them um, to, to um, implement some uh, more procedures, but they can uh, use it for a statistical analysis or for visual representation, for whatever. We don't really know and we, were, we don't really care what they are going to do with the data. The idea is that we're going to empower the user so they can uh, um, uh, use this data to their own convenience. Because remember that it could happen that these uh, users are customers of our restaurant and they are not really happy of, of, of um, they are not really happy with what we are offering at the moment. And this so far is so good. This is what IKO is requesting from us. Besides the conventional products, we should provide the digital data and then uh, the data sets, and then the users uh, will be able to manipulate it. Um, but here we find a kind of a weak point in, um, in, in this diagram. And I'm, I'm, I will just show you what will happen with the future, because in the future, um, we have identified that this process here, the reception uh, of, um, uh, of AIS, of the information coming uh, from the originators, 
uh, it's sometimes uh, putting in risk the integrity of the information, yeah, because we receive this in conventional means of communication like fax, like a telephone, etc. So what we want in the future, uh, besides this provision of digital data, it's also to receive also data from the originators. And once we receive this data from the originators, we should also be here uh, in this part processing, uh, checking the, uh, the, the, the quality of this data. And then maybe this section here, which indicated manual processing, might disappear in the future. Note that uh, at the moment, we will still continue creating and developing our conventional products together with our new uh, digital data sets. So let me summarize uh, a little bit so far what we have been uh, discussing about. And the first uh, um, uh, conclusion is that information, it's actually equal to the combination of data in a specific context, yeah. Also that uh, four out of five uh, IKO digital data sets are, supposed to, are supported by AIXM and closed coding guidelines. And um, also that the data provision should start from originators through AIS to users in data form. So, Oscar, now we are ready for the next question of the day. Yeah, you can, you may habilitate them. So, the question in this particular case is uh, we will read it. Uh, what would you say are the main challenges with uh, the digital data sets? And we have uh, some possibilities that you can tick and uh, we will see what do you think about. Thank you. I see a lot of progress uh, of the people um, already answering and voting. I will just give it a couple of more seconds and then we can uh, discuss the results. Can we say that all of them <laughs> are the main challenges? <laughs> could be, could be as well, yes. <laughs> So there I we also go. Have my favorites. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite a difference. Maybe the less uh, problem that uh, the users or the people attending the webinar today, they say it's less a problem is uh, the training for the users, but uh, the system implementation is largely uh, the most uh, concerning uh, point for the implementation of these the digital data sets. So training for AI and personal, it's probably the second, yes, it's the second uh, concern that they have and uh, lack of uh, guidelines and instructions as well. But of course, money is always an issue and budgetary constraints. So from the most important concern is system implementation, then we do have a training for the AI and personal and lack of guidance and instructions. Then it is the budgetary constraints and the last, uh, the, the less important in this particular case is training for the users. Thank, Thank you, you Thank you. Yeah, I, I tend to, to agree with uh, some of these results. Yeah, perhaps we can uh, offer some more information here. So let's move yeah. now to, to, yeah. W were you going to say something, Oscar? No. Okay. No, nothing. Yes. Okay. You can continue. Okay, so uh, let's move to, to our next sec uh, section, which is about uh, client's expectation. Yeah, so there we see, we see the cook and fresh data was uh, never this good. Um, yeah, my wife and my daughter, they always tell me that I have bad jokes and I hope that you don't feel this, that you, you don't think the same, uh, you don't think the same because uh, with my pictures here. Um, but what we really want to talk about right now, it's actually uh, about data users expectation. Yeah, what is, uh, the expectations from especially from ikeo uh, what they, what they really want um i guess that we all here are aware of this uh, mission that we have for the last decade which is uh, the transition from ais to aim <clears throat> and this transition we we may uh, sometimes perhaps uh, find uh, a lot of references and technical uh, documentation but if we could dare to summarize the whole transition from ais to aim we could say that uh, it's actually to move from the standardized products in paper, AFTN or AMHS, 
to data services uh, with a, a service oriented architecture, web feature services or web map services. So if you're wondering what is this service oriented architecture and web feature services, well, these are going to be the mechanisms in some technologies that uh, we need in data services. But the whole idea is to transform the, the paper provision into data provision. Yeah? And don't, don't feel uh, afraid right now for these concepts, so WFS, because uh, I, remember, I know that for sure that uh, working in AIS, you were not worried on how EFTN works or how paper works. You only use these because these are tools that you use for, for um, uh, uh, transmitting the information. If you're an engineer, of course, this is going to be of your interest. Um, and the more you know, obviously, the, the, um, uh, the better um, a perspective it, it gives you about the whole process. So if we could summarize, it's transforming from paper to data. In our last uh, webinar, uh, as Oscar mentioned, uh, that you can find in our webpage in the section events, we were talking about SWIM, yeah? And, and SWIM is one of these um, uh, improvement areas that IKEA wants to, to get with uh, the ASBU uh, um, methodology in their IKEA Global Air Navigation Plan. And uh, today, uh, uh, we're going to focus on the digital AIM. If you want to have a look at uh, what we discussed about uh, uh, in, in our previous webinar, then you can check the recorded uh, version in our web, yeah, where we talked about digital AIM and also SWIM. But today, we're going to focus on, on digital AIM. So what is what we have for digital AIM, which is this improvement area according to IKEO? You might remember that uh, according to ASPU, uh, these are several blocks of six years each where we have objectives to, to be met. Yeah? And what we have in digital AIM, it's actually several objectives for block one. Uh, and if you see there, uh, quality assurance data, AAP data set, terrain data, obstacle data, aerodrome, uh, instrument fly procedures data, and note them. Actually, there we have our fantastic five. Yeah, This is part of block one. Part of book two, what we have is stream data, airspace data, data for high space, data everywhere. So you see, uh, th these are actually the objectives that we have planned in AIM, and we see data everywhere. Yeah, there's there, and, and even when a no time improvement, which is part of the uh, the two blocks, uh, the last one uh, in block one, no time improvement and no time replacement, we can also see no times, and in the future, this will be. Uh, uh, more data oriented, yeah. The, the NOTAM will actually be uh, also offered and provided as, as data. So data is everywhere. Question is, right now we are in 2021, almost, yeah. Uh, we're finished in 2020, and uh, we are supposed to have ready the stream data, the airspace data, and then block one should have been met already. So the question is, where are we right now? Yeah, are we already in a planning stage? Are we right? Are we already uh, making some progress? Remember. That there is out there a lot of uh, uh, users hunger, hungry for data, and we need to adapt our menu so uh, they, we can also feed them. So if we can think about how could be the the uh, the data services in AIM in the future, the easier way to see it's actually with AIXM stream services. Yeah, uh, but remember that the data may be transformed in different ways, and, and AIXM is not the only format. We could have several more, like for instance. Uh, web feature services or web map services or even KML or even ATM data services. We can, once we have the data, we can transform it and we can offer this in several ways. Who will tell us how to do this? Well, IKEA will for sure um, recommend to offer this in AIXM, but then our users, which are the customers in our restaurant, they are the ones who, who might also um, give us uh, ideas or hints or recommendations on how they could also use the aeronautical uh, data. What else? Um, what products then the users can create using data sets? Well, um, because how are they going to live without uh, uh, our AAP and, and no terms? Yeah, because they don't know how to process this data. Believe me that they know. They have a lot of uh, tools. So they can create electronic charts, electronic flybacks, uh, and they can also use the same data that we're providing in an ATM screen. Um, just to, for demonstration purposes as, and as an example uh, that of what we can do with data sets, let me run a short video of a great tool that we have for AXM 5.1 visualization from our good friends of uh, Lucia at Hexagon. Um, and uh, here in this example, we will see, uh, we will see two, give me one second. 
I will just run the video if available. Okay. I promise that there is a video here, <laughs> but I'm having some problems running it. Just give me uh, one second. I will just uh, stop sharing and then I will open again my presentation just to see if we can run this video. All right. We'll show the screen again. Second, I hope you can see this the screen. We see it. Let's oh. see if it will move. Yes. Thank you, Oscar, for confirmation, but I'm still having some problems. Uh -huh. it's, it seems that uh, GoToWebinar doesn't like these embedded videos. Yeah, yeah sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, a little bit tricky, but you will be able. To. If not, we can just continue. You explain the content of the video uh, if it is not so easy yes. to see. All right, exactly. Uh, it's uh, really a shame because we would re I would really lo I love to show it, um, but uh, it seems that we're having some uh, problems. Just uh, bear with me one second. I'm trying to put it again. I know the video quite well. I saw it yesterday when you show it to me in this <laughs> webinar context as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry about this. I will run it again. If not, then yeah, we, we should uh, um, move on. There we go. Sorry about it. I hope you can see it now. Uh, what we have, it's um, two different files. One asks for AAP data set, uh, where you, we can see the metadata here, and another one for obstacle data sets. So both of them are here. Uh, right now, we, what we can see here, it's a 2D representation, but we can change it into a nice view, which is a three-dimensional uh, representation, where we can see the routes, the airspaces, and also uh, we are empowering the users so they are the ones who can uh, select and decide what what's, uh, layers they want to show, the routes, the airspace, et, et cetera, right? Uh, this is something that we can't do with, uh, with uh, one of the printed charts. We can also get more information uh, um, uh, and dynamically for the features that we are selecting. And uh, we can also, in this case, navigate uh, uh, through uh, the map, yeah, in a very interactive way and um, and follow, uh, like for instance, going to the airport. Note that this is a, a fictitious airport, which is actually in the middle of the ocean. So that's why we don't see here like uh, the terrain. But we also see obstacles in 3D here, which is kind of nice, yeah? Because this is kind of new for us in, in aviation, in aeronautical information. Um, and uh, it's great to see that we are able to do this with AXM51, with digital data sets. And my friends, this is actually going to be uh, how the information, the aeronautical information, will be provided in the future and how the users will actually work with them. Okay, so as a summary, we know that AIS to AM is equal to paper from paper to data. Also that uh, the global air navigation plan uh, from ICAO demands an AM service fully data oriented and uh, that our users will be able to transform data according to their own needs. So, Let's go to our next uh, poll of the day. Oscar, please. Here it is, I am here. What is your impression on the time it will take to implement and use digital data sets? It's a very, very uh, important question, I must say. Do you think it will be a time frame of uh, uh, two and or five years, uh, between five and 10 years? or more than 10 years. Let's see uh, what this, what our attendants are uh, answering. Yeah, I see a very good progress. Let's give uh, more seconds just to see if we have more information about it.
Okay, Oscar, then I think uh, we have a very good uh, percentage of people who have voted uh, and then I will share the results. Uh, the majority of them, they think it is between five and 10 years and few people think that it will take more than 10 years. So let's say we are quite optimistic. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. All right. Um, then uh, let's go to our next uh, section um, and what we want to discuss now, following my uh, my jokes about this uh, restaurant and delivery uh, um, and, and example analogy. Uh, if we have a restaurant, then we're going to deliver our food. And uh, there we go, DDS, digital data set delivery, 28 days or free. Yeah, I would, I would like to have a sound like an applause, like a yeah, nice joke, but I know that it's very bad. So we, what we want to really uh, know here, it's how are we going to provide digital data sets? And first of all, we need to distinguish between what's digitization and digitalization, which are two different concepts. Digitization, it's uh, transforming um, uh, conventional products into digital, yeah? Uh, this applies, for instance, if you are scanning a picture or if you are transforming cassettes into MP3. It uh, applies to analogical products and it's, it automates in a bit, a bit the processes, but not really optimizes the, the, the data or the process. So the best example here, it's the electronic AAP. We are digitizing this, we're providing it in a different way, but we are not really moving the next level, which, actually, which is actually digitalization. Digitalization involves more, more uh, even more than uh, digitization. And that means that uh, it applies to the whole organization um, and uh, there, there are process transformation. And following the same example as before, this is just like uh, um, uh, uh, instead of only transforming, uh, uh, transforming cassette music in cassettes to MP3, uh, the digitalization would be to deliver uh, on a stream, uh, a music in stream like uh, Spotify or Netflix or something like that. So, we know that in AIM we're getting ready for um, data set, uh, databases, uh, data sharing, data integrity, data exchange. Uh, but the question is because every everybody talks about digitalization uh, and, and systems and uh, mechanisms and infrastructure, but uh, we are not paying attention to something really, really important, and that is to change our our mindset towards data. Yeah, are we really getting ready for data data mindset? So the message that we want to bring you today is that uh, we need to embrace digitalization yeah? uh, in AIM. Uh, we know that this is happening everywhere. It's not only in AIM, it's happening in all business. During COVID outbreak right now, it, it has been even proved necessary and fundamental for the economic development. What we are doing right now is to use digitalization uh, for exchanging and sharing more information. But why? I, I could say, leave me alone, I'm okay with my paper products, in AFTA know them. I don't need to go through all these changes. But the main reason uh, to, to embrace digitalization is because um, we can't stop it. Yeah, you know that I'm living there, IT in, 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 in capital to indicate information technologies with which uh, you, some of you might know that this is digitalization, right? Uh, we can't stop this. I mean, this is something we can't uh, um, uh, stop. Uh, so we need to uh, follow it, yeah, and um, it, it's also important in aviation. Aviation needs it because we have new concepts: RMP, uh, PVN, GNS, uh, GVAS, etc., and they're all uh, relying uh, on their uh, on quality data, yeah. And so uh, aviation needs it right now, and they are demanding it. Rem remember that they are our user, our customers in our in our restaurant, and they they are hungry for data. And uh, the last reason I have for embracing digitalization is because AIM needs it. We need it as, a, as AIM. I mean, uh, we have been uh, for years um, uh, kind of a, a secondary uh, service, but now we're getting a lot of importance and relevance. And uh, this is all due to this digitalization that we're moving forward. And, and it's getting, um, uh, it's putting AIM in a very interesting position in aviation. So what do we need for getting ready for DDS? So. Coming back with the analogy of cooking, we need a, a pot where we're going to cook the ingredients. But the first thing is that we need to train um, a very reduced group of selected staff for system acquisition. Yeah, uh, These people will be trained in AI exam, in databases, so they will help you later 
to go to the second step, which is getting a DDS, a digital data set ready AIM system. Remember that you may have an AIM system, but this system uh, may, uh, does not only need to have to be AIXM 5.1. It requires also, also the coding guidelines. Yeah. And then um, once we have a, a system, um, then we need to train the rest of the staff. The rest of the staff should also be trained. This is also part of creating this uh, data, data mindset, yeah, because we're going to empower also our, our officers, our AIS um, personnel, so they, they are also um, aligned with the mission of digitalization in AIM. We also need to collect the data uh, and, and process it. Yeah? We need to make sure that uh, we have formal arrangements with our data providers um, uh, all in, in place and that we also implement quality assurance procedures. And once one, we have the data and the, our staff is trained, yes, we can build our conventional products like the AAP and NOTAM without forgetting that now we have another requirement, another uh, a dish which should be part of our menu, which is our data. Yeah, and this we should make it available either in our website, the WFS, WMS, or uh, whatever ICAO uh, uh, let us, uh, let us um, or tell us where to share this in the near future. So in the end, what we're going to have, it's our menu, uh, a little bit uh, enhanced or extended, having still our paper and our media together with our digital data sets, yeah? But um, if we think about it, um, this is just starting uh, the roadmap to a whole new AIM service uh, provision, yeah, where data is going to be very important, where our standard presentations in paper and in media might become dishes not very much demanded by our customers and where digital uh, data sets, where digital data sets will actually be uh, more and more used, yeah. So uh, paper has been a great companion for AIM for many years. I know we love it. I know we like to, to work with it. It is even romantic, yeah. We remember the letters in paper, but we must admit that um, it is time to say goodbye and move forward to a new digital era, embracing all the challenges and changes uh, for the benefit of aviation, but most important for the benefit of our profession of AIM. So the summary, and we're going to, sorry, because we're extending a little bit, um, I will just finalize uh, with another section. We need to promote and develop a data mindset. AIM systems are, are uh, based on AIXM should be adapted for DDS. So if you already have a system, uh, AIXM or AI, and well, based on AIXM, then uh, we need to make sure that we enhance this system so it's able to provide digital data sets as per the coding guidelines that I mentioned and that you can find in, 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 in Eurocontrol uh, um, web pages, in, specifically in AIXM.aero. And finally, that uh, conventional and digital products should be provided in parallel, but uh, we need to, to, to be aware and we need to realize that in the future, uh, it's, it's data oriented, right? Data everywhere. So we need to uh, be aware that we're going to enhance our menu with that. So now it's poll time again. So I will ask uh, Oscar support for our next poll time. Here I am. So we have another question, which is how much would you say your organization is investing in changing the mindset towards data sets, data in general? You think it is not much? You think uh, that uh, they're working on it or definitely adopting it? Thank you very much for all of you who are participating. Yeah, I see the percentage growing. I will give it a, I will give it a couple of more seconds so we can uh, have more results. So, uh, Oscar, I think we're ready. I will present in the screen the results of our. Yes, so the majority of, uh, of the participants today think that their organization is working on it, on it, which is good news, of course. And then it's more or less very, very, pretty much the same percentage is at 
thinking that mm, actually they are not working mm, a lot, so not much, and uh, some other 28 things that definitely they're adopting it. Thank you, Oscar. All You're right. Welcome. So um, I know that it's it's um, uh, um, four o'clock already in Europe. Uh, um, we, we really appreciate you being here. We had some delays. Um, I still have uh, some more information that I would like to share with you. And remember that we still we, we still have uh, the um, the gift, the surprise that Oscar men mentioned uh, in the beginning. Um, so if we still have uh, uh, 10 to 15 minutes more, then uh, I will continue with the presentation. I understand if some of, some of you uh, need to leave. Uh, and um, you can see later the, the whole video if, if you have the time. Uh, but those of you who are still staying with us, which is uh, more than I did at the moment, uh, I really uh, ask you for some more minutes uh, where I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, how we in Group PED uh, can uh, help you to build the right data, the data mindset uh, to your staff. So um, an important aspect towards uh, creating these data mindsets is actually the training, the awareness uh, of the involved staff. And in Group ED, we, we know this very well since uh, we are proud to say that we have been uh, um, uh, uh, providing uh, data since 2003, yeah, for, for almost 18 years. Uh, when working with the EAD, with the European AIS database, being pioneers and, and influencers uh, in the transition from AIS to AIM. So uh, we are able to share our experiences and, and also our unique and exclusive AIM training, uh, um, exclusive for AIM, yeah, our training exclusive for AIM. Just let me highlight some of the um, uh, main uh, achievements that we have in, 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 this, in our training academy. And that is that uh, we have provided um, a training in more than 100 countries to more than 123 organizations, more than, uh, than 8,000 uh, participants um, during the last uh, decades. We're able to provide our training in, in seven languages, including English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, Russian, Greek, and also German. Uh, we have two different branches in, 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 in Group ED of uh, training. Uh, in one side, we have the EAD training. In another side, we have the AIM training. And uh, we have uh, got very high uh, satisfaction rate uh, results coming from all our different customers. In the end, what we offer you, what we, uh, we can offer you is to make your staff ready for implementations and operation of these new systems, of these um, uh, new concepts uh, that we have uh, um, in, in AIM uh, nowadays. Some testimonials that we want to share from some of our participants is that they believe that uh, our training courses are beneficial and in a simplified and understanding uh, for simplifying for understanding the phases of uh, evolution towards AIM, and also that uh, it's eye-opening for understanding data formats and databases. Um, and uh, we have been offering a, a training, our class, uh, our regular classroom trainings for almost a decade right now. We have a lot of experience with this, but we know that we have now limitations, right? And that's why we want to offer you today, that's why we want to uh, uh, announce to you that we have a new uh, product, which is called the AIM Seminars, with the same quality of our training courses. Uh, and the idea with these AIM Seminars, it's that uh, we're going to provide uh, um, information, to, we're going to share knowledge, with, broad, with a, a, a broader audience. And it's, these are recommended for introducing, refreshing or consolidating knowledge. The typical topics that we might discuss here are, are um, we have divided in AIM basic and, AI, and AIM advanced. In AIM basic, for instance, we can create a ad hoc seminars for you, depending on what are your needs for air navigation, static and dynamic data, regulations, uh, related to AIM, from AIS to AIM. And in the advanced part, we can uh, also offer you an introduction uh, to AIXM in the format of, of a seminar, uh, digital notes and data sets, uh, uh, terrain uh, um, and obstacle data, ADQ, et cetera. Um, we would also like to um, share with you something that uh, some of you have uh, may, may have seen already, perhaps, because it's one of the handouts that you can download uh, 
um, in, in this application in, in, in GoToWebinar, which is our AIM training catalog for 2021. Uh, if you are not able to download this from this application, then um, you can uh, send us an email and then we will for sure uh, share with you what is our AIM training for next year. But as you can see, these are available in our website as well. Yeah. It is also available. Thank you, Oscar. It's also available. But if you want to, to ask us for some specific uh, uh, training courses, what is the content or what is the methodology, et cetera, any question that you might have, just send us an email. And uh, you can see here, uh, um, you can have an idea of what are the different trainings that we have, both basic and advanced. Uh, know that this is uh, another product. This is training. What I offered you before is seminars, which is uh, with the same quality, but uh, um, let's say con in a more condensed way. Yeah? So these are the two different products, training and seminars that we have. And um, we would also like to, to announce something interesting, something crazy that we're working uh, for next year, for 2021, yeah? Um, we, we are proud to uh, announce that we're going to promote a webinar series in this same format, uh, uh, talking with you, that we are going to title AIM Builder. What is this AIM Builder going to be about, yeah? We're going to uh, build together with you uh, AIM. And, and what we want is to, of course, we will continue providing you some some pieces of information like the ones we like the one we did today uh, with um, uh, several aspects of AIM like concepts, best practices, uh, or some news in, in the AIM field. But we all, we want to go beyond this, and uh, we want to uh, to to bring you with uh, more uh, uh, than only explaining you uh, some of the concepts. We actually want you to know and to talk directly to our AIM heroes. And who are these AIM heroes? Well, these AIM heroes are those people who have been actively participating in AIM, uh, either uh, as uh, developers or uh, um, unit chief, uh, chief of the different units or working in international organizations and who could come here to us and, and share with us what is what they have done. Yeah, uh, what, is, uh, what is what they, they have done in order to, to succeed with AIM in their own countries. We are going to know them uh, what is what they have done? What will the what 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 else will they do in the future? What are, are their plans? And also to share uh, some lessons learned. So we have already a very um, interesting list of contacts of people who we're going to bring to these uh, interviews, let's say. Uh, but uh, we want to extend the invitation for you. So if you have somebody uh, who who believed who could uh, be one of these interview, then let us know. Please send us an email, propose your hero, and we want to uh, interview them. We want to squeeze their knowledge, and we want to know uh, what is what they eat, what is what they sleep, what is what they do in order to succeed uh, um, uh, in AIM. So finally, as Oscar commented, we have a special gift for you. A special gift is nothing else than, a, than an exclusive discount on virtual trainings and virtual seminars. Uh, this is mainly uh, depending on, on both the amount of uh, trainees that you're going to send uh, to, to be trained with us and also the amount of trainees. Uh, depending on that, we can, uh, uh, we can offer you a special uh, discount. But we have uh, the go-ahead of our boss and uh, we are today uh, bringing you something else, yeah? Because this, it's an exclusive discount, but we want to provide you with an additional 10% discount for uh, for orders of training and seminars in our virtual format uh, for those orders before the 15th of January 2021 for trainings or seminars being held in in the first quarter of 2021. So don't miss this opportunity. We're offering uh, two discounts, the usual discount that we have uh, due to the amount of participant and uh, an additional 10% discount. So if you're interested, then, then please uh, send us an email to training at groupead.com. Uh, yeah. And I think it's now time for our last uh, poll. I know that uh, we still have uh, uh, some people here. Thanks a lot for still uh, being here with us. So I will run the last poll um, and then you can give us some more information. Oscar, if you want to comment something. Yeah, this is more oriented to the future webinars and uh, we are interested uh, to know your opinion about uh, which of the following subjects uh, you'd like to know more in a webinar format. AIM staff training and selection, 
migration from paper to data, AIM regulatory context, and quality assurance in AIM. All right, so I will leave the poll for some more seconds. We have a very good uh, rate of um, answering right now. So in some seconds, I, uh, I will just present the, the results. So you're going to help me um, talking about an Oscar. Okay, there we go. So it's a uh, migration from paper to data, very much related to the subject of today. And uh, quality assurance in AIM are the most uh, interesting uh, topics. But uh, it is also quite uh, uh, high in the rate AIM staff training and selection. And the last one is AIM regulatory context, but still the 40% of the people are interested on that. So let's say first interests are quality assurance in AIM, migration from paper to data, AM staff training and selection and AM regulatory context. All right, so thank you, Oscar. And uh, now I think uh, it's time, although it's very late. Uh, I'm very sorry for this. Oh, well, it's only 15 minutes later, but we, we had some kind of issues with my camera at the beginning and your video later. So that delayed us a little bit. Okay, so thanks everybody for still being there. Um, and now yes. uh, we would like to open uh, um, uh, the, the session for questions and answers. I would like to uh, remind them that uh, there will be a survey uh, that uh, we will appreciate a lot if they dedicate a few, it's a couple of minutes to uh, answer the questions that they will receive, they will see in this uh, survey. All right. So uh, do you have any question, Oscar, that uh, you have identified perhaps that you would like to uh, or somebody would like to, to, to make a live questions? We can also enable their uh, um, his or her microphone. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, we, we really run out of time, so we don't, we don't really have a lot of time to dedicate for questions and answers. We are still available in our email, of course, that uh, they can contact us if they have something. Uh, we can just uh, try to have a, a, a couple of them, three, to, to be able to answer if they have any particular. We can just try. All right. So if uh, there is anybody, uh, just raise your hand. We can uh, enable the microphone. Let me see if I... I see, for instance, uh, um, I don't know if Mr. Uh, Kyo said kind. Uh, I will enable his microphone just to see if he has an answer. For a question? <laughs> yeah. No. If he has a question, sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired now, but. Uh, uh, it was intense. Uh, it was very interesting, but very intense as well. Yeah. Well, I, I see Mr. Kiao there, but uh, I don't know if he can um, listen to us and talk to us. Uh, I just enabled his uh, microphone. It seems that he's from the web, but um, then, well, well, if not, then Oscar, maybe any question from the, from the well, it's still late. It's very late, as you mentioned. So um, uh, th there are some questions I see here in the, in the application. So what, what we could do is that, um, uh, because some of them I see that they are kind of um, uh, more complex and perhaps we don't have time enough. Um, uh, uh, for instance, Hatim, Hatim uh, he says, data sets, they will be in which format and uh, what are the means of exchange? This is a very interesting uh, question uh, because ICAO, is not uh, uh, really saying in what format we should provide the data sets, the data sets yet. Um, we're still waiting for um, the, the uh, document 8126, the new one, the one in, in four volumes. And we know that the latest, the last volume, which is volume four, uh, will bring some um, guidelines on how the data sets should be exchanged. We also know for sure that AIXM will be um, mentioned or referred as a means of compliance or will be referred as, a, as an available mechanism. 
But that doesn't mean that AXM will be the only one. As, as mentioned before, uh, in, 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 during the presentation, um, the users will demand from you more formats. Yeah, they can tell you, for instance, uh, if they need KML, if they need a, um, a WFS, uh, uh, I mean, um, a web feature server uh, to, to make it available for your users. So AXM will for sure be one of those, which, which is in accordance to um, ICAO. But um, our users uh, later, they will, we will also need to be careful listening to them and, and see how can um, they um, uh, use our data and also to provide this data in different formats. So in, in, in a nutshell, there is not a specific uh, uh, format. AXM will be uh, one which will be referred to, re recommended, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be the, the, the only one. We could also even offer it as an Excel file or in a table, yeah? because ICAO is not a specific in that sense. So now I think that we are really, really late. Um, uh, <laughs> I think that the rest of the questions is we have the we have your emails. What we're going to do is that uh, we're going to uh, answer them uh, via email. And uh, we really thank you for for the time. If you have uh, any other question which you didn't uh, put in a, in our um, interface, please uh, drop us an email uh, uh, at any of these. Uh, uh, possibilities that you see there in the screen at info, at events, at training, at Um We would really would like to uh, know from you if you're interested uh, in the training, in the trainings, in the seminars that we're providing. And um, if you have any other questions in regards to, to any uh, um, a subject or issue related to AIM. So um, I really appreciate uh, the time that those of you, which are still uh, quite, a, quite a bit of some of you who are still connected with us, um, and um, see you next time. And hopefully with uh, uh, um, somebody we are going to invite, uh, somebody who will share, who will share with us uh, some of her experience in, in knowledge. So thanks a lot. That's uh, all from my side. Oscar, I leave to you. No, uh, just the same. Is Thank you very much for being there. Uh, we will be uh, waiting for you next time we do webinars. And uh, again, uh, thank you very much for the time you have dedicated to us today. Thanks a lot and see you next time. See you next time.